embarrass the person if they see this. It's just, what was it? You don't have to name them. You don't have to give their social security number. I feel like they'll know. That's... I'm gonna say it anyway. <laughs> Crazy, can we go? It's the craziest is possible. So, so the limit is how exist. Oh, I have crazy client stories almost every day. I'm kind of jaded, like nothing's really crazy, honestly. I mean, I tattooed in South Beach for eight years, you know, that's eight spring breaks and that's, you know, eight Memorial Day weekends. And <laughs> it just becomes another day. I've done mine. What was yours? Yeah, no poop. No, no, no poop, poop. yo, geez. <laughs> Yeah. I had a chick curse off. Never had like, that have a curse off, bro. Like I was rolling, dude. I'm sorry. It's funny. I'm gonna laugh. My name is Carmen, bro, in the Bronx, bro. Hold this. I swear to God. Her man came in and he was like, "What the? F I'm like, yo, that's your girl, brother. I knew something was up, man, because I'm, I'm doing a leaf on the bottom, and she was just like, mm. <laughs> she was just like, oh my god, I feel nauseous and. <laughs> and it wasn't like a little bit, bro. Like, it was like, that just came out of you? Like, yo, Jesus Christ. Like, what? Like, give me give me some examples so I could go through my, my Rolodex here. Well, well, Pooch, for example, yeah, <laughs> always wants to tell us about the woman who shit on his tail. It still trumps, like, like people know me for that. Like, I, I just think, oh, the shit, Carmen. Sorry, Carmen, again. I apologize for throwing your name out there like that. But it was a funny story. The craziest stories that hits me the most, I guess, comes with memory. And our strongest memory when it comes to sense is our nose. And I guess every time that question comes up, the first thing I think about is all, you know, the couple of clients I've had with some really bad BO. Yo, the funny thing about this how man, when he walked in the room, he was just like, I said, oh yeah, that's your, that's your girl, like, yo, she literally was like, Oh God, I was oh, just like, no. play a, uh, you're gonna come clean this shit. I'm not, I'm not touching this. You know, she was so fine. She was gorgeous, B. It's always the cute ones. You notice that? So, well, always more. the cute ones pass out, throw up, like, like, like oh, the yeah, exorcist, sure. just, <laughs> yeah. Like that just was like, in you? In my earlier days when I worked in Rochester, New York, I worked on a, a bar street, you know, basically where all the bars were at night. And we had one guy that came in. His name was uh, Sparkle. He was a very, uh, lively lad, if you, if I might add. So I ended up tattooing him, and the whole time he was making all these weird noises, and not like sexual, but it was just like, it was just very awkward. And then I remember during the tattoo, I kind of got a whiff of something, and I was like, what is that smell? And I, I kind of just let it go for a little bit, and then he got up and he looked at the tattoo, and he's like, oh, this looks great. And then he just, he gave me the money and ran out. And I'm like, man, why did that guy not stay long? Well, he fucking shit on the table. So it was all over the table. It, was, it must have been running down his leg because there literally is just a trail of shit going all the way out the door. And I was like, okay. So we had a guy in our shop. He kept getting up and having to use the bathroom. And where my station was was like right by the bathroom. There was just this moment that like, I was like, whatever the hell that smell is, like somebody destroyed our bathroom. I didn't notice the guy, but I guess he had left. And it was my business partner came out and was like, yo, I don't know what my client was up to, but like my whole room smells like shit. And I was like, bro, it's not just your room. It's all the way out here. And he opened the bathroom door and it looked like he had just basically bent over and just shit all over our entire wall. We made, I, we all made him clean it up because we were like, yo, that's your client. But the guy came back like two days later and scheduled another appointment and acted like it was like nothing happened. And then I also hate throwing people under the bus too. Like, I don't get what it is. <laughs> she shouldn't have shit on my table. Well, no, for sure. I'd throw her under the bus too. I hope you're watching this. What's yeah. your name? Carmen. Hey, Carmen. Yeah. I hope you're watching yeah. this. Don't be a shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> When I was working at a street shop, if you couldn't make it down the stairs into the basement where the tattooing was, you couldn't get tattooed. That was one of the rules. Sometimes you'd just be sitting down there and you're like, you're <laughs> like, okay, that person's not getting tattooed. I had drinks before I came, I'm so sorry. Like, nah. I had the drunk hiccup, you know, we, we all see oh, that. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Be all greasy and shit. There was always weird people coming in, drunk or whatever, but there was one time that, uh, 
uh, a pimp came with his stable of hoes and uh, asked us to tattoo all of them. I mean, essentially, you know, it was, uh, they all started drinking and then they turned into more of a show than it was a tattoo session. You know, it was South Beach where nobody really gave a shit what was going on. It turned into stripping and then girls trying to get clients for themselves that were getting tattooed. And <laughs> to, to the point where eventually it just had to stop. But yeah, it was, it was pretty fucking. Yeah. <laughs> this guy came in, it was a walk-in. Really tall, like masculine looking man. A manly man. He wanted his first tattoo, and I asked him what it was going to be, and it was literally three dots. I put the stencil on him, and he started passing out. I think that happened like three times before I actually got him in the chair to tattoo these three dots. Um, it was just like all in his head. He psyched himself out so much. I felt bad for him. After the Eagles won the Super Bowl, this 90-year-old dude came into the shop, very old, I'm not even exaggerating the age, I don't think, and he wanted the Eagles logo directly on the center of his forehead. I knew it would go viral on the internet, and I was like, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, and then uh, I decided not to do that, because that would have been bad. I used to do uh, the permanent makeup. I had one lady, uh, I did the eyebrows for her, and in the end, she went to the mirror, and she's like, I don't like it. I hate it. I don't like. And I'm like, what? What do you don't like? Tell me. And I was trying to like add something to change the like the shape. And then she told me, no, you know what? Give me the machine. I'm gonna finish it by myself. I was so tired, you know, really. She was so crazy. I was like, okay, take it. She took the machine and she started like doing it by herself. And she did it. I was sitting with open mouth, you know, I was like, seriously, she did it. And she was so happy with the result. The result was so bad, but she was like, yeah, you see, I like it like this. So I'm better than you. Okay. <laughs> I, I told her, no, you don't need to pay. You did it by yourself. So it's fine. But don't tell anyone that it's my work. Just, you can go. Yeah. Where was this in LA? No, this? no, it was in Russia. Only in Russia you can find that tough people, you know, who can that's <laughs> just that's what grab my shin. I, <laughs> I was tattooing this guy. I've tattooed him a couple times before even. He seemed chill. I see him popping Xanaxes like crazy, and he has a prescription to it, so I was like, whatever. I just figured that's what he does. As the day goes by, he starts getting really weird and kind of like sketchy, especially towards my coworker who's working in the booth with me. We're at a convention. We're at the Kansas City Tattoo Convention. Next morning, my coworker work, wakes up to a an email that's like crazy long. He's talking about how he hates my uh, coworker so much. He was like basically talking about giving like physical threats to my coworker and how he felt like we treated him like a subhuman all day long. And he thought we were having a secret pizza party after the convention that he wasn't invited to. And then he told me that he hopes my wife gets cancer because we didn't invite him to this pizza party. By the way, nobody ate pizza. There's no talk about pizza. And this mother in his email is just talking about like, F you, F you guys, I'm just trying to eat some pizza. You guys won't let me eat my pizza. And you won't invite me to your secret cool tattooers only pizza party. And this guy told me that he was looking after the convention until 2 a.m. And he said when he finally found the place we were having our pizza party, we weren't there. I don't recall even there being pizza served at this convention anywhere. And he was stoked on his tattoo. Also, when I finished the tattoo, he was like, oh yeah, yeah, bro, this is looks sick. And then I wake up to like him wishing cancer upon my wife. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I guess I got a story. I mean, I don't know if it's the craziest, but it's a, it's a, it's a good story. So when I was tattooing Syl Sylvester Stallone, super cool guy, but just a really uh, difficult client. Sly would like ask for the, the stupidest shit. Like literally, there'd be like some black, like it's just I don't know. Let's let's just say like like right here, it's like super dark. And he's like, yeah, I wanna I want a bumblebee right there like over black and I was like it's just not gonna work why why and then I have to like you know sit there and like explain it for like an hour this is this is a fact I told him that he's the worst client that I ever had and uh, right to his face but we were you know jokingly but kind of I was being serious but then he told me like he's like if you weren't so good I'd knock you out he went to an ink manufacturer to make brighter ink I'm like dude I went like 10 layers of yellow the brightest yellow on your arm is actually bright he went to his ink manufacturer to make brighter ink. I don't think it was even possible, but that's what he did. Super awesome guy though, let me tell you. But it was, here's another one actually. He, <laughs> there's a lot, I could go on and on. So I did a portrait of his wife right here, then he wanted me to turn her into like Superwoman. 
And I'm like, it's just not gonna work. Like, how am I supposed to put a crown, like a yellow crown over hair? Like, what, like it's just not gonna work. I basically ended up talking him out of it, but it wouldn't have worked anyway, so I don't know what the heck he was talking about. Well, he's got the super bright yellow ink. That's, I didn't think about that. <laughs> he's got the bright yellow ink, yeah, that's true. It was funny when he first called me too. It was his assistant, and I thought I was being like pranked. And he's like, yeah, I have uh, Mr. Sly for you on the phone, and I, I Answer the phone, he's like, hey, Mike. You know, I was like, and I, was, I thought I was being f***ed with, but it ended up being, ended up being him. I don't have crazy clients, but my clients have crazy stories. I just tattooed a girl who found out her biological dad is a psychopath. I tattooed the most wonderful lady whose five-year-old daughter sees her dead brother. I hear all these insane stories, and in a nine-hour session, like, you will cry together with your clients, especially if you're tattooing their cat in a memorial piece. I will cry with you. <laughs> I've gone through people when they've gone through gender reassignment and seeing their process and seeing them blossom into this new person. I've gone through, like, divorce with people and like through years of divorcing and then finding a new partner and like that continuation of seeing a person grow and blossom is like maybe that's my craziest client story it's just like seeing people grow I also like that one second of the story there you were clearly doing the impression of this voice me? No, I don't like even know. Like one second, no, it was I completely mean, subconscious, I, but you were No like, way. It just dropped into the, <laughs> what, what, it was yeah. very good. Yeah, he definitely still talks like that. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not an act.